Hey guys, John here from John's DIY Playground. Today I'm going to take this uh, power supply that I have in my workshop and hack it a little bit. <clears throat> it's a pretty cool power supply because it's got the USB ports in addition to the uh, regular electrical ports. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of these banana jacks. And we're going to add these just so that I can have 5 volts in another way besides the USB. So if I want to just get a quick connector on there or something, I can have 5 volts. So I went ahead already and I took the uh, screws out of the back of this one and you can see um, when you take it apart um, it's got some space but the transformer and the circuit board that makes the five volts is kind of taken up uh, more than I had hoped because I wanted to put it over on this front face but it uh, doesn't look like that's gonna work and then if I try to put it on the side here this curvy surface it probably won't look too good so what I was thinking is if I can put them side by side on the side uh, port of the plug like that 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 would work and it actually turns out that it can work because on the bottom part <clears throat> it's actually got uh, some flat surface to it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and mark this thing up for a couple of holes drill the holes and uh, place this thing and show you how I get it uh, you know mounted and wired let's get started so I determined I want to have the spacing between my two banana plugs to be a uh, half inch apart from each other so what I've done is I've taken these calipers and I set them up for a quarter inch because uh, fortunately on this molding of the inside of this part, there's kind of a raised rib that looks to be right on the center part of the side. And all I'm doing is I'm kind of taking my, uh, my tool here and going like dragging it. So I don't know how well this will show up on the camera, but hopefully you can see it. It's got... Uh, two scribe marks on it now and they're spaced about a half inch apart. It doesn't have to be perfect, of course. So now I'm going to get the drill and drill the holes probably right on where that parting line is that you can see in the molding. I'll do that next. Just wanted to point out these banana plugs are actually not a perfect circle. <clears throat> they're oblong, so they're egg-shaped kind of. And uh, if you notice that the, the narrow part, it's uh, just over a quarter inch diameter. And then if I rotate it, you can see it's up to 0.299. So what I'm going to do is actually be conservative and take the smaller value. I'm going to start drilling with a quarter inch and then see if I can kind of hog out the rest to make it look kind of egg shaped like this thing is. What's that purpose of that is, is so when you're, you know, your uh, plug is mounted. So when you go to screw and unscrew Papa's banana plug, it won't uh, rotate inside the case. So we do kind of want to do that as an anti-rotation feature. All right. So I started with a quarter inch uh, diameter drill, like I said. And then what I did hog it out is I have a Dremel tool and it's got a, a two flute uh, router attachment uh, that I used. And I just kind of hogged it out by hand, kind of eyeballed it until it was uh, close, just kept trying iterations of it, you know, and then until I finally got it to fit. So basically um, it's quite tight, but um, it does fit and it won't rotate either. So you can see that um, it's set up just right, just how I wanted it. So now let's get started at the final assembly. Before I started the wiring, I just want to do a rough fit check. And you can see I got a little bit of a problem here because these posts are a little long. The metal posts want to run into the edge of the circuit board and the case where the two USB ports are. So what I'll do next is I'm going to take a Dremel wheel, cutoff wheel, and I'm going to cut these uh, posts down just a little bit. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything because I'm just going to need a little bit of space here to solder on some wires but uh got to cut this off so i can fit back together with no no problems and no interference all right so now that that was done with the chopping clipping of those posts i've just got enough clearance now <clears throat> and uh i went ahead already and i put the black wire on and a red wire on another nut to clamp it down and then uh, where it connects to the circuit board here is uh there's two points for the five volts, the negative side here and the positive here. So I've already gone ahead and soldered it. And it looks like it's turned out pretty good. I'm just going to power it up and test it. Uh, keeping in mind, I don't want to electrocute myself with these uh, rails over here. So be very, very careful if you're doing this. Of course, it's 120 volts. It could shock or kill you. And uh, we're just going to check this for five volts before I go and screw it all back together. All right, got it all buttoned back up. Screws are back in the back and finished product done. Um, 
I liked how it turned out. Um, I wish the supply was, or, you know, so angled, so it's pointing kind of downwards when I have it up against my bench. It's, you know, it's going to work just fine, but, uh, you know, that's the way this thing is styled. But that's it. That's how you hack your, uh, your power strip slash power supply that has 5 volts, so I can pull 5 volts out of here now anytime as well. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to be notified when I make new ones right away, please click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, guys. This is John from John's DIY Playground. Have a great day.